there. So uh, real quick, I'm going to touch on the pandemonium kingdom. Okay, I'm not going to give a lot about this because it does just fit into the cosmic kingdom. And the pandemonium kingdom is where the throne of Lucifer is at. Okay, so it's a it's a realm within a realm. Okay, but this is the headquarters of the kingdom of darkness, the main headquarters of the kingdom of darkness, because this is Lucifer's throne. Okay, in the cosmic realm, the headquarters of the kingdom of darkness. This is the capital city. Okay, like I mentioned to you before, there's like the triangle off the coast, right? And that's that there, that is a capital as well. Okay, so there's other capitals and other realms. Okay. But this is the realm of wildness, uh, uh, noise, chaos, okay? The uproar. What's tied directly to these kingdoms is what I men mentioned earlier about the cube, okay? What's also tied to this kingdom directly through the cosmics, okay? The cube that I mentioned, okay? The obelisk, the Eiffel Tower, the statue that we have in the U.S., the pyramids, they're all part of the Pandemonium Kingdom. The monument tower that goes up to the peak that's in our capital, you guys know what I'm talking about, the, the narrow one that goes up real high, they have those in other places in different parts of the world, okay? Those are satanic, satanic uh, those are satanic towers, communication towers in the realm of the spirit. Okay. This is also the kingdom and all of those things that I told you about that I just mentioned. Okay. Is what, how do I say this word without it being on the video for now? Um So it's what the group or organization is that's on the dollar bill that has the the um, eye in the triangle, okay? And what this country was built on, the Mason, okay? These organizations are directly tied to the cosmic kingdom. They're directly tied to the pandemonium kingdom. Okay, yes, that, that monument, yep. That's the name of that monument, but there's other monuments that look at identical to those, and some of them are white and some of them are even black. Yep, yep. So, out of this kingdom, okay, out of the pandemonium kingdom that is in the where the throne of Lucifer is at, okay, so I told you the cosmic kingdom, and it, the red magic is underneath that. This is the pandemonium kingdom that is within the cosmic kingdom at the throne of Lucifer. This is where white magic comes forth. This is where you have witches, wizards, and warlocks that work and operate the spells, the oaths, the agreements, the rituals, all the stuff that they do pertains directly to these places and these locations and the things that I was just talking to you about and just mentioning. Okay. I know it's a lot and it seems like a lot, but you'll in, in some way, shape, or form you'll never you, you'll never forget, you know, what was talked about. Okay. And and it's all about exposing, you know, a deeper level of just deception and how things work in the kingdom of darkness, right? Because we just constantly hear people talking about, you know, just the kingdom of darkness and it's just it's just it's almost like people just try to war against it as one large thing yes it, it yes it's the same thing the the cube it's the same thing the the only like difference in the name is because um the name that you mentioned there was a form of a god you get what i'm saying but the reason also that that uh, specific cube is tied to that planet and I'll tell you, and you guys can go look this up yourself, is because um, in, in the center of that, there is one of those in the center of that planet. Like you can, if you type in that 
that planet and you type in the that word cube, uh, it'll show you. It'll have zoomed in pictures of that. So it yes, it is like that. And so those things, the the tron of what you're talking about is it's it would be a lot to just try to add to what's being said because um it's something that takes place in the in the spirit realm you know what i mean it's kind of like talking about like i mentioned last saturday like um like the the dwarves and the elves and did i say elves the fairies and the gnomes and stuff right i'm going to talk about those when i do the pestafarian kingdom okay those things are real but they're in the realm of the spirit Okay, that's where all these movies, that's where all this stuff gets created. And these ideas and these concepts come from like uh, movies, right? And and then we see like, um, you know, the location where kid, where all the kids always want to go, right? The, the two kingdoms, right? The castles and stuff with all the rides and everything, right? And you see where all these movies and these different kids things come from. It all comes from things from the spirit realm. Okay, the uh, fifth domain of Lu the fifth dom the fifth realm in the cosmic uh, kingdom is the domain of Lucifer's throne. Okay, he has a throne. He built he built his throne just like uh, just like the Father has. Okay. The fifth realm, domain of Lucifer's throne. So the realm of the throne, throne of Lucifer, this is also where the Pandemonian kingdom comes in. Okay, I told you there was five, there was five uh, domains of darkness. Okay, the Pandemonium kingdom is one of those, but it is also in the cosmic realm. So the three that I told you that was... Um, the three that I told you was in the earth, right? That the devil oversees is the marine kingdom, the Pestafarian kingdom, and the Cro-Magnon kingdom, okay? So the water, the earth, and under the earth, okay? So there's three. The cosmic is in the heavens, and the pandemonium is in the heavens as well. So a common belief is to think that Satan and his angels are presently imprisoned in hell, like I mentioned. However, the Bible does not teach this at all. But the Bible does teach us in Job 1.6 that Satan presently has access to God. It says, Now it came to pass on the day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, that Satan also came among them. Okay? Even though he was banished and he was, he was kicked out of those realms of, of heaven, he has uh, minimal access. Okay. Luke twenty two thirty one. 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. Okay. And I'll give you some prophetic revelation to this. Okay. So this is when Jesus says this. Okay, Jesus was a man, all right, walking on the earth at the time with Peter. I understand this, and many of you who operate in spiritual giftings will understand this as well. Jesus knew what was going on in the throne room of God because God gave him that revelation. God gave him that revelation, and he told him that Satan was before their throne seeking to sift him like wheat. So do you see the transaction that was taking place here? right? Satan wasn't down here with them. Satan was before God. Satan was before the Father on the throne, right? Requesting his access to Peter. That came through revelation knowledge to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ told Peter, Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you like wheat. Jesus said, even ended up telling him, I'm going to pray for you, okay? That you would hold strong, that you would stand strong in the faith. All right, Job 1, 7, Scripture says that Satan is also active, or uh, that Satan is also active upon the earth. Right, the Lord said to Satan, where have you come from? 
right? Because he came, he came from somewhere. So the Lord's asking him, where have you came from? Satan answered the Lord, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking up and down on it. Again, Job 1, 7. Okay. Isaiah 14, 12 through 15. It says, For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into the heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Okay, again, we see the stars here talking about the cosmic kingdom, right? I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high, yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Again, that was Isaiah 14, 12 through 15. Okay. Again, so within these domains, um, they have countless uh, principalities, countless demons that work underneath them, right? It's, it's, it's very uh, strategized, the hierarchy of how they do things, okay? These dark angels and principalities are not in direct contact with men on the earth, like I mentioned earlier. They are able to influence men and women on the earth, right, through the spiritual wickedness, okay, through spiritual wickedness, okay. That spiritual wickedness is governed in the, in the earthly domain through witches, warlocks, and wizards, okay, using spells to control and manipulate the spirits that are within people. Okay, one is one is able to influence hundreds of people at the same time with the same thought, the same dream, the same false vision, uh, whatever it happens to be. That's why it's very important to not uh, get yourself caught up in, uh, you know, certain types of leadership that um, that you can that you see or that, you know, or that you discern or in false things. There's leaderships out here like I mentioned to you last Saturday with crazy colors in their hair. They always got in different uh, eye contacts, making their eyes look all white. They got all kinds of just tons of makeup on. They're, they're constantly decked out in the Gucci and the Louis Vuitton, right? Um, they got uh, nose piercing. They got piercings in their faces, okay? Those things are all demonic. Those things all show ties to the kingdom of darkness in some way, shape, or form. And these people are out here writing books, selling you books on, on witchcraft and all this other stuff, right? They're, 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 they claim to be apostles and they claim to be uh, prophets and all this stuff. And they're selling you the next e-course and getting you to join groups and doing all this stuff. They've never, ha have any of you ever asked where any of these people got their own deliverance at? Who did they go through deliverance with? You're, you're ex-witches and ex-warlock, but you've never even been through deliverance. You've never been through deliverance. Those spirits are still working in you and through you, right? You can, you can say that you gave your life to Christ just because mentally you believe you gave your life to Christ just because in your heart you say, I have a love for Jesus Christ, and, and it probably is some kind of love there. But you can't serve two masters. It's a deception that happens. Any person that is in deception will become a deceiver. Okay? Because that spirit is there. Any person that is deceived by all this stuff, you will end up being a deceiver in the body of Christ. Okay? I also have down here 1 Kings, let me put it in the, 1 Kings 22.6 and 21-23. through 23. Okay, um, this kingdom, the cosmic kingdom, okay, now we're going to get into a little bit about, um, about about people being about people being tied to these kingdoms okay 
And it's also going to help a little bit about the people who are deceived, right, in the body of Christ um, that are tied to these kingdoms. They're still tied to these kingdoms, and they're out here building up ministries and doing all this other stuff, all right? Marketing and networking is not ministry, okay? Any, anybody with the Bible can stand on a platform and tell Bible stories, okay? And they can, these people that have written you a lot of books, you know what they've done? They've went and gotten these books from the 60s, 70s, 80s, right? That all the people that came way before us, they've gotten these books. They've they've studied this information from an intellectual perspective, right? They've mashed it up with scripture. So the information that they talk about is truthful, but they have other spirits on the inside of them. Okay. They have other spirits on the inside of them. When these people are laying hands on people, when they're praying over people online and we're doing all this other stuff, these demons, these spirits are imparting and transferring into people. Okay? And you say, oh, I hear so much about saying that uh, demons can't transfer. You know why they say that? Because they want to do public deliverance with people because they like the spectacle and the show of the whole thing. And so they will say, oh, they can't transfer into nobody. They can't transfer... They can't do any of those things. And they say that to make everybody feel comfortable about the fact that of public deliverance. OK, and I'm not saying that it's that Jesus Christ didn't do any type of public deliverance, but none of us are Jesus Christ. yo. <laughs> like we're we're not him. OK, and I'm not saying that we're not supposed to do any public deliverance either. I'm just simply saying it, you all of you guys can tell that how the spirit of the Lord, you know, that it's become a spectacle and it's become this showmanship of stuff. And it's not. It's not the glory is not being given to God. It's it's so man can try to heap some glory onto themselves. OK, so and the the thing is two things, the transference of spirits. OK, I will tell you that like 15 years ago, I, I cast out uh, my first demon out of a person. OK, there's no YouTube, there's no Facebook, there's no any of those things. It was only by God telling me what to do, by the, hearing God's voice of telling me what to do. I didn't know about, um, I, I knew about spiritual armor and obviously the blood of Jesus, right? But I didn't know anything about covering anybody else that was around. You get what I'm saying? And so when this happened, I cast this this demon out of this woman. It went into the three-year-old daughter of this woman that was completely in the other room and it was this was like late at, late at night okay i've never talked about this this testimony ever publicly so it, so but i i heard the girl the daughter was only three and she was grasping for air i heard her grasp for air like she couldn't breathe immediately in my spirit i just knew that that spirit went in to that that child and it had access to the child because it came through the bloodline but these people will try to tell you that these spirits can't transfer. So then I went, casted this spirit out of the three-year-old daughter. Well, in the same room, they have, the, the two kids fell asleep on the floor, had been watching TV, and the, the boy was two years old. When the spirit went out of the, the girl, then the little boy didn't wake up. They didn't. The kids didn't wake up the whole entire time. And he stretched his legs, you know, like a little uh, toddler would do and stretched, right? And immediately my spirit, I just knew, like, this spirit just went into that to that boy. And so I took a couple steps over the top of him. And before I could even say a word, that demonic spirit spoke out of this two year, two year old boy in the most uh, horrific voice. And it said, no, no, I want him. He's mine. Okay. This was my first encounter with supernatural things and in, in, in any type of way. And it literally changed my life forever. Like I'm almost about to cry right now over it just because of how impactful it was to me and where God took me after that moment, right? And so um, these people will tell you that, that these spirits can't transfer, but that's not true. That is not true. My first anything having to do with the kingdom of darkness, I literally watched this same spirit transfer into three people, right? So... And also the transferring of spirits, okay, this is another way that it happens even for adults is because when you go to these churches or when you get into, you know, any type of online ministry or Zooms or just any of those things, okay, and you, and you determine 
that you're going to allow someone to to lead you, teach you, pray over you. You're going to join their groups. You're going to join their ministry online, or you're going to even sow and buy their books. Okay, when you do those things, even the the sewing and the purchasing of a books, it's putting you in an agreement with that person. Okay, if you go to a church and you say, "Oh, this is a great church," whatever, and you decide to start going to church there. In the realm of the spirit, you are not just submitting yourself as a woman or a man to that that person in leadership. You're submitting your spirit and your soul to whatever spirits they have in their life. So whatever they have operating in them, with them, through them, you are now opening your own life up for those same spirits that have access to you because you've submitted yourself to that authority. I hope this makes sense for somebody. Okay. Again, that's another form of transfer, transferring of spirits. And you say, well, I'm a Christian and I'm, you know, I, I got my armor on and I got all this. You can have your armor on and still submit yourself to things that you shouldn't submit yourself to. All right. So the, the, the cosmic kingdom. Okay. This is where a lot of, um, there's different forms of magic, as we know, you know, red magic, white magic, black magic, blue magic, right? And they're all colored for a certain purpose. And as I go through and teach you guys about these kingdoms, there is specific magic that pertains, okay? This magic is like its own kind of covering. Underneath that magic is witchcraft, voodoo, okay? But they're all underneath the umbrella of red magic. Then you have witchcraft and voodoo and hexes and vexes and spells that are underneath blue magic. You have some that are underneath white magic. You have some that are underneath black magic. And all the people that have truly been in witchcraft and know this stuff know exactly exactly what I'm talking about. There's, there's different types and different forms of magic, and they pertain to different kingdoms. Okay? Again, a lot of people just say, witchcraft this witchcraft that and they just categorize it as witchcraft and you have sitting here and you've been warring against witchcraft for five years you know and you still got different stuff happening it's because you're not it's because there's warfare of witchcraft that is tied to separate kingdoms okay that's tied to the to the five different kingdoms that i'm talking to you about okay i brought this up a little bit uh before like last uh i think maybe last weekend so in the earth, you have witches, warlocks, wizards. You have people that do the hexes, vexes, spells, uh, voodoo, seance, rituals, all of these things, okay? What you will have is that you will have the witches, warlocks, and wizards that operate out of the cosmic kingdom. They, they're, they're, they're mantles, okay? Because the enemy gives anointings, right? The enemy gives anointings. The enemy gives uh, blessings, Okay, the enemy gives all of these things to, to people in his kingdom. There are witches, warlocks, and wizards that operate specifically out of the cosmic kingdom. All the curses, the hexes, the vexes, the spells, even the voodoo in other countries and different places, the stuff that these people do, they're tied to the cosmic kingdom. The stuff, the spells that they do, they tie people's destinies and they, they tie people's virtues, okay? They tie people's minds to the moon, to the sun, to the stars, to the planets, okay? This is how you get lunatics. They're tied to the shifts and the moons, the lunar, okay? Lunatics, okay? And so you'll have witches that work out of that kingdom. And you'll see when I go and, and, and teach you about these other kingdoms, you have witches, warlocks, and wizards. And they all do hexes, vexes, voodoos, spells, all of those things, and they work out of the marine kingdom. You get what I'm saying now? So you might have you might have warfare in your life, and you might have been warring against the marine kingdom, like I said early, for, you know, maybe for two years, right? Maybe you've overcome a lot of stuff that comes out of the marine kingdom, and you've gained victory there, but you still feel certain witchcraft. You might have witchcraft coming from the Pestafarian kingdom that's tied to the earth. You, you, you know what I'm talking about when you see these witches and all the stuff that they'll either decorate with, they'll get tattoos with, they'll wear clothing with, that has to do with moons, stars, right, planets, the, the cosmos. They'll, they'll have that stuff in their life, 
whether it's through clothing, whether it's tattoos, jewelry, earrings, all this different stuff, it'll be part of their life. They work out of the cosmic kingdom that I'm teaching you about right now. You'll see others. You'll see them, their tattoos, their clothing, their, their jewelry, all of these different things. It'll be um, colorish, right? Mermaidish, right? Different types of, of, of colors and things that they even decorate in their house with. Okay. They, if you notice, they will use different types of things when they're doing the hexes, vexes, and all the stuff that they're doing, they're doing their rituals. They will use items and different things that pertain to the marine kingdom. They use seaweeds, they use driftwoods, they use mosses. You ever wonder why now when you go into places like, uh, you know, I don't know, like uh, maybe like home goods or the places maybe you would buy some decor for your house and they have all this driftwood stuff, right? That's all, they got the beads and stuff. It looks all like natural wood. That stuff isn't by chance. That stuff isn't by accident. It's to get these people to decorate in, in stuff that has came from companies that serve these principalities and powers. All right. You remember, I told you before that all of the luxury items come out of the Marine Kingdom. All of these fancy dresses and stuff that you see all these people wearing to these award shows, all these celebrity peoples. You, you could look it up or maybe I'll, I'll post some pictures of it, but I could show you pictures of all of these females that wear these dresses. And when you look at them, all you see is sequence. All you see is these sequences. But you there's designs that are in them that pertain to the kingdom of darkness like you would not believe. There's this one there's this one guy and I don't want to specifically tell anybody to go follow him or look him up. So that's why I'm not going to mention his name, but that he's been given that gift by God. And he can see these things in this in in this stuff, and so he has like he he's done videos and stuff. Like they they shut down his social medias, they shut down all of his YouTube's. So they've like repeatedly shut this man down, right? O over all of this stuff, okay? So, but again, you have cosmic witches, cosmic warlocks, and and cosmic wizards, and they operate with through red magic. OK, and that red magic is like the umbrella to the hexes, the vexes, the voodoos, the spells, right? All of this stuff that they do on people. OK, they're like stargazers. Cosmic witches are all about astrology, astronomy. I think many of you on here probably know that, you know, the fortune telling, the, the palm reading. Um, and they are largely focused on the lunar energies of the moon cycles. OK, and spells that amplify or protect against celestial events. OK, if if you know anything about witches, warlocks, wizards, especially the ones that operate out of this kingdom, they do a lot of stuff specifically at certain times that pertain to the moon. Right. They pertain to certain times when planets are lining up with one another. Right. We've seen some of the stuff that's happened recently, uh, even over like the past uh, couple months and over the past couple years. They do specific rituals. They do certain stuff and they, they do it over regions. They do it over areas, uh, cities, you know, all that stuff. And it's for the purpose of tying people spiritually to the cause to the cosmic realms, to the cosmic uh, kingdom. OK, it's multidimensional. They are versed in star signs and birth charts. OK. Um, but their practice is active and not passive. They seek to change energies, right, by using their knowledge rather than just telling you um, Scorpios are secretive or something, right? So they don't just, they're not just for the purpose of just um, uh, reading your, um, your, your horoscopes, right? It's like it's far deeper than that, okay? So the reading of horoscopes and all that stuff, like, a lot of those things, yes, it's all witchcraft, but it's like it's it's the it's the initiation, if you will, right? It's like the initiation to getting people uh, uh, spiritually drawn into these things. Okay, so um, if you feel drawn to the skies, or you enjoy the science or the complexities of the cosmos, the workings of the universe, or, or those type of things, you could have a tie to that, okay, or be connected uh, to the cosmic kingdom in some way, shape, or form through witchcraft, okay? And we know the power of God, we know the blood of Jesus, you know, can destroy all of those things. So I'm not teaching you guys anything that's something to like be fearful, right? It's it's for the purpose of uh, dispersing knowledge.